The British police regard them as dangerous extremists. They see themselves as fighters for a noble cause. The Animal Liberation Front has targeted hundreds of research labs, farms and individuals associated, they say, with the abuse of animals. My guest today spent seven and a half years in prison for his role in ALF operations, but has direct action brought his cause into disrepute? Keith Mann, welcome to Hard Talk. Thank you. Let me begin by quoting to you the words of a couple of judges who sat in judgment on cases where you faced the court. One judge described you as a ruthless fanatic. Another said that you are conducting operations bearing all the hallmarks of terrorism. Do you now regret your involvement with the Animal Liberation Front? Absolutely not, no. Um, certainly not because of the views of a judge. But I've got no regret or remorse for anything I've done. I've never hurt anybody. What the Animal Liberation Front does, what I've tried to do, is raise issues that I consider a lot more serious than, I don't know, paint strip on somebody's car or uh, an abusive letter through the post box. You know, we're talking about live animals being tortured to death for various reasons. These are big, serious issues that we should be discussing. But you were, in 1994, for example, arrested with bomb-making materials, explosives, and a, a list of targets. That's not exactly just letter-writing, is it? Well, no, but unfortunately, just by writing letters isn't going to get us where we want to be. We're not able to raise these issues by simply writing letters to people that are abusing animals. And often, throughout history, it's been proven time and again that the most important actions that raise these issues are, tend to be illegal. You know, yeah, by, but explosives, you, see, you began by saying, I, I've never harmed anybody. What, what on earth were those explosives for? They were well, this list of targets. It, well, they weren't explosives. They were, they were incendiary uh, materials. They were for causing fires, for raising issues, for raising fire, for causing fires to raise issues. You the know. sorts of fires that we've seen uh, throughout the last ten years, ALF activists burning down buildings, burning cars, burning personal property of individuals, that's harm, isn't it? Well, to inan inanimate objects, but as I say, there are, there, are, there are bigger issues, there are things that we should be discussing that are more important, which is the damage that's being caused to life. And it's not just animal life, it's human life particularly with the vivisection industry, and now we see what's happening with the meat industry, the massive amount of damage it's causing to human beings and to the environment. You know, these are big issues, and if damaging an inanimate object can raise that issue and get people talking, why have we got a problem with that? I think that's very important, and we should be encouraging people to protest and to raise these issues. We're going to talk a lot about the beliefs you have and the damage you believe is being done to animals in many different forms, but I, I do want to stick for the time being on your notion of what is legitimate in terms of your campaign, your, your protest. You keep talking about inanimate objects. Well, Chris Bishop, for example, from Wickham Laboratories, 2005, he's not an inanimate, inanimate object. You, in open court, shouted out at him, your trouble has only just started. You'll need to look under your bed from now on. Anybody who's involved in animal exploitation is obviously going to be on the receiving end of protest action. Now, that can come from people writing letters, protests, firebomb attacks, animals being well, rescued from their property. threatening to put an incendiary device or a bomb or whatever you were threatening, it was all implicit, but whatever you were threatening, it clearly was directed at him, his person. I'm just trying to establish how far you're prepared to go. And I, let me just quote to you the words of, of the man who many people regard as the founder of the ALF, Ronnie Lee. Quote from him, Animal liberation is a fierce struggle that demands total commitment. There will be injuries, possibly deaths, on both sides. That is sad, but it is certain. Well, I've repeated similar sentiments, and unfortunately, um, it, it hasn't reached fruition on both sides of the, the divide. One side, well, take it as you will, but our side of the argument, we, we, we never discussed this, people are being killed because they're protesting against animal exploitation in this country. We've had three protesters killed in recent years. Most people don't even know about that. They'll know about paint strip on cars and an alleged threat in a courtroom, but why aren't we talking about teenagers being killed by middle-aged men because they're protesting against animal exploitation. These are serious issues and it is going to continue happening because the authorities aren't concerned to protect people like me who are trying to raise well, you, these you, issues. You say killed, obviously the authorities have looked into all of these cases, no well, charge uh, of murder was ever brought or anything quite, like that. Quite. So, so it's not as though the authorities haven't looked, but my point to you is that on the one hand the ALF 
says we do no harm to human beings. You talk about only striking against inanimate objects, but when one picks away at what you do and the beliefs you have, clearly you are prepared to strike at men you describe as liars, but men you believe are legitimate targets. Well, I mean, that doesn't stand up to scrutiny because in 40 well, years of campaigning in this country, nobody's ever been hurt by Animal Liberation Front actions. So where is the violence? Where are all the dead bodies? How They're on the outside her? of the divine. How, how do you define her? I just wonder whether, for example, the family of Gladys Hammond, the old lady whose remains were disinterred in a Staffordshire graveyard, do you think the family were hurt? Well, these are, these are very violent men. This, this gang, this group, this family... Um, they used to attack protesters on a daily basis outside their farm. They were sending 10,000 guinea pigs to be tortured in laboratory experiments every year. Now, in this country, tens of thousands of people, just in this country alone, are being killed prematurely by their GPs because they're being given products that are being tested on animals and passed as safe. OK, that's a lot of human suffering. And it's not just the individuals that are dying prematurely. Their families are having to go through all that grief as well. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about publicity stunts, as you say, with the, with the disinterment of, of Gladys what Hammond. What we had was Why is an that old lady's important? remains who were dug up simply because her family were involved in the breeding of guinea pigs. And you, not you personally, but your movement, the ALF, wanted to hold those remains until the family desisted from their farming operation. And you think that's legitimate, do you? Well, it served its purpose, I, and I'm not saying well, I'm that... I'm not asking about it served its Is it legitimate? Well, you defend it. Absolutely, I've got no problem with that. All day long, we dig up dead bodies. We put them in museums, we move them to create space for building new supermarket developments. We've got no problem with digging up dead <laughs> bodies, no except difference? when it happens. Do you see no difference in this case where there was no consent... There was no sense in which the family had any say in the matter. Well, the body, the remains of an old lady were simply dug up and hidden away and held to ransom. Awful thing, but what do you do? People weren't allowed to... The, the injunctions were bought by the, by the new church family. They go to the High Court, and a lot of these companies do it now, to buy injunctions to keep protesters away from their property, killing any objection to what they're doing. Now, what they're doing, they say, is in our interests. It's in the benefit, for the benefit of humanity that they're torturing live animals. We've got a right to protest, or we did have. It's rapidly being taken away from us. So w what's happening now is people are being forced into a corner and the reaction you got at New Church is a classic example of well, that. Well, I'm just interested to know how you weigh up uh, the balance between the hurt clearly done to the family. The family were distraught, the, the daughter of, of this well, that, that was the whole point. old lady. She said, the people who did this aren't human beings. How could any human being do something this gruesome? So there was hurt on the side of the family. And, of course, there were also... The, there's a the question of the guinea pigs and the way they were being treated. Do you equate... Guinea pig bones and those of a human being? Well, well life, I, equate, I, I, I consider to be equal. It doesn't matter to me what species it is, and this is the whole point. This is why I, I am doing what I'm doing. Uh, I'm promoting compassion for all beings. It doesn't matter whether it's a guinea pig or a human being. We should have respect for all life. And if we're not going to respect the, the weakest and most vulnerable in our society, how are we ever going to respect each other? But I'm interested in the idea of equation. Absolutely no difference in your mind between the rights of a guinea pig and a human being. Well, uh, to put it into perspective, I would actually have a lot more concern for the, for the rights of a, li a live guinea pig or any species of animal than I do for the, the bones of a long deceased human being or any other animal. You know, I've got, we should have a lot more respect for live, live, living beings than we do for inanimate objects and dead bodies. Well, respect for living beings, how about respect for the widow of a senior executive uh, of, of the Ro Roche Pharmaceutical Corporation? He died. The widow then found a bomb exploding under the car, the family car. Long after he was dead, the car was burnt to the ground. She could have been in that car, as it happens, she wasn't. But is that respect for, for life? Well, again, I mean, I'm not sure the incident you're referring to, but as I say, I've got more respect for, for living beings than I do for inanimate objects. And if, if by burning that car you can raise the issue and get us talking about big issues, like people dying prematurely, or about three million animals being tortured to death in this country every year to test products... You know, these are important issues that we should be talking about. I, I, are you pro-animal or anti-human? Well, neither. I, I'm pro-life, if you like. I, I, I believe in respecting all living beings. Would you describe yourself as alienated in some ways from mainstream human society? <laughs> Absolutely not, no. I find I have an awful lot of respect for my views, and so do many people in, my, in, the, you know, in this environment. Well, respect for your views, but all around you, you see things that you regard as absolutely unacceptable when it comes to the treatment of animals. 
Of course, and I think most decent human beings do. And I think all, all probably all of society would, if, if slaughterhouses were made of glass, or we had access to these laboratory tests that are being carried out in our name, most people would object. But it's hidden from us. We're told that it's all clean and cosy and, you know, there's no suffering there. And there are all, well, all these I'm experiments sure are regulated. Case, I mean, people eat meat. 90% of people in Britain eat meat. They know where this meat comes from. They know about the battery hen houses, the turkey farms, the cattle sheds. They know and they eat, just as they wear leather shoes, just as they consume animals in so many different ways. You are not winning the argument. Well, I, I am to disagree. Uh, this movement, um, which I've recently written a book about, is 40, 40 years old. It's now become a global entity. There are, there are people breaking into laboratories in Russia now and raiding fur farms in North America to raise these issues. These are kids that are growing up. They're not happy with the way previous generations have, have treated this planet well, no and its inhabitants. That there are individuals who are not happy, but just look at the latest Mori opinion poll. It came out late last year. It shows a clear 76% of people support the use of animals in medical research, regulated medical research. Overwhelming majority. Well, I, I tend to disagree. The Europeans for Medical Progress recently did a survey of GPs and 85% said they were unhappy with animal research and wanted an inquiry into this whole area. And the vast majority of MPs have recently signed an early day motion asking for the same, the first independent inquiry into this whole area. So you don't accept the argument that comes from scientists, that comes from the Research Defence Society, that antibiotics, anaesthetics, vaccines, insulin, heart surgery, all of those key breakthroughs in medicine of the last 50 to 100 years have involved experimentation on animals. Well, water's tested on animals. Every product that exists has been tested on animals. That's not to say that those tests were of any relevance to the development of that product. You could test, you could put them in the engine of your car. Any product you'd care to mention, any heart drug, any kind of product, put it in the engine of your car and claim that it's contributing to the, the running of your car. It wouldn't be. But you could claim it, and that's exactly what we're doing with, with animal research. Just because it's been tested on animals doesn't mean that those tests are in any way relevant to developing the Do product. Do you think um, these for-profit companies, all of them spending vast amounts on research, which involves, of course, experimentation on animals, are doing it simply because they enjoy experimenting on animals? They're doing it because it is, in their view, the only and indeed the best way of developing new medicines. Well, I, I, t I disagree wholeheartedly, and as I say, if so we had this inquiry, it? well, it's a bad habit, and, and also with animals, you can prove what you want, you can prove what, what on earth you want, you can test. They were doing it to test to prove that tobacco was safe by giving it to rats, getting rats to smoke, because rats don't get lung cancer. You can prove whatever you want by p picking any particular species. You can make any product safe. Now, we can see with the number of products that are being taken off the market, after they're killing people, Seems something's not working, and it needs to be assessed, this whole area. It seems to me you've got a problem because people, even inside your own camp, are giving ground on this question of research, regulated research for medicinal purposes. Pete Singer, for example, who many describe as the godfather of the animal Many in the media, movement. I disagree again, wholeheartedly. Well, he wrote the book, Animal Liberation, which for many is the bible of the animal rights movement. No, 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 this is a, this well, is he, a media he wrote line. The book, didn't he, he certainly wrote the book, but he's not, he's not the godfather of the movement, and he isn't representative of the vast majority of people who object well, I suspect wholeheartedly. you say that because in the recent past, just the last few months, he has said that he believes that using animals for research on key diseases like Parkinson's is in some cases justifiable. That just unfortunately doesn't fit your more radical, your more extreme view. Well, I mean, you could put Peter, in, it's Peter Singer in the same camp as anybody who's working in animal research and they will say the same thing. That doesn't make them right. But my point is but, that but he's the... not coming from the same background. Peter Singer is somebody who's devoted his life to the idea that animals have rights. But in certain situations, he believes experimenting with them is justifiable. Well, that's his view, but as I say, we could prove this once and for all with a proper independent inquiry. And it's only the industry, the people that are involved in these experiments, that are resisting this call for an inquiry. Now, why is that? If they're so proud of what they're doing and so sure of what they're doing, let's assess it, let's have an inquiry, let's test this theory and see if it works. And I wager, I wager they'll be wholly embarrassed by the, by the outcome of any inquiry into that area. Do you use drugs yourself? Well, uh, fortunately, I've not needed to, no. But I would do, and I wouldn't have any objection to. You wouldn't? No. I mean, for example, if, if you or a, a close family member or friend develop diabetes, you wouldn't have a problem using insulin? No, as I say, I, I, you know, I haven't got a problem, and it's not, it's not a case of, well, this has been tested on animals, so you're not entitled to use it. 
You know, these products yeah, would have been developed they, without the animal how testing. How far your principle goes, because well, you was, know that it has been tested on animals, but well, you if, would be prepared to use it. Well, if I thought it was going to do me some good, of course I would, but I would certainly use alternatives first, and there are many more efficacious alternatives on the market rather than pharmaceuticals, which are doing people an awful lot of damage. Do you believe that if you had your way, and companies like Huntington Life Sciences, GlaxoSmithKline, who use their services, all of these companies had to stop their research using animals in this country, in the United Kingdom, do you believe that those activities would stop, period, or would they simply be displaced to other countries where the regulations on animal testing are not as tight? Well, I'll go to your final point first. The regulations are, are meaningless. The, the, the abuse of an animal in this country is the same as in any other country. There's no, there are no regulations. There's no nice way of torturing an animal, of force-feeding it bleach and pesticide, which is what we're doing, and which is what is often well, bra I mean, bracketed what as medical research. Wrong. There are regulations. Well, they're, they're meaningless. They don't go far enough, as far as the there individuals. are regulations. In fact, the British government says that its regulations are the toughest of in the world. Of course they do. Of course they do. Every time there's an incursion into a laboratory in this country, either illegally or by somebody working undercover, the same awful material comes out. Shoddy, shoddy research, cruelty, extreme violence. And it doesn't matter which country it's being done in. This is why we need an inquiry, because an inquiry in this country would set, set the pace for the rest of the world. People would see that animal research isn't working. In some ways, you sound like a fundamentalist. You know what you believe. You believe that animal testing is never justified, is always wrong. You won't accept the scientific evidence that it has actually been crucially important in a whole range of medical breakthroughs. And in that sense, there's no arguing with you. Well, you've just stated, a, 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 well, you've stated something that's not fact. There is no evidence. There is no scientific evidence. It's never been presented. Now, without there well, ever you, being an inquiry, just, how can you, you stay? You can say that to me as many times as you like, but, but all the of the evidence fact. stacks up against you. We, but there is no all evidence. All of the evidence, of every drug that comes to market has been tested reviewed, on animals. Has been tested on animals. And then go on to kill people. How is that working? It, well, whether it goes on to kill people, there are hundreds and this hundreds of drugs, and I've just named the fields in which they have been successful, which have changed people's lives. And yeah. you say that actually there's no evidence whatsoever that those drugs work and that those drugs work because they were tested on animals before well, they came to market. What there is, there's an awful lot of evidence that shows that p many potential cures for all the vast number of diseases and illnesses that we've got that are killing people still today have been bypassed because they haven't worked in animals. So potentially we could have cured cancer, we could have cured heart disease, even though we know what's causing most of these problems anyway. And often in the case of cancer and heart disease, it's animal tested products or animal products the vast amount of animal fats that we're eating is leading to degenerative heart diseases. Why do we need to torture more animals to find a drug to cure that? We know what the problem is. You seem to believe in a, in a vast conspiracy that involves the scientists, the big corporations, the consumers, the government. Is everybody conspiring to hide the truth that you see? Well, we're asking, I'm an extremist, I'm one of the worst extremists that this country has ever created, if you read the media. I want an inquiry, that's all I'm asking for, an independent scientific inquiry into this whole area. Let's prove it once and for all. That would establish the facts. We've talked about your use of incendiary devices, your direct action. We've talked about judges who've described it as terrorism. The problem you have is that many of your allies think that you have done grave damage to the cause that you purport to represent. Well, certain, some people probably do think that, but there wouldn't be a movement in this country, and a global movement, as I explained earlier, across the world, if it wasn't for organisations like the Animal Liberation Front raising these issues, we wouldn't but be my, talking my about the I've already quoted the opinion polls to you. My point is that you're not winning the argument in the court of public opinion, and the reason is, according to people who, again, are anti-vivisection, the reason is your methods. Alistair Curry of the British Union for the Abolition of Vivisection Quote, we will win the argument by changing hearts and minds, not by intimidation, blackmail and forcing people to change their behaviour against their will. Well, the problem is, and I, I, you know, I didn't want to spend any time in prison, and I certainly don't want to go back, and I don't want to see other good people in prison. But what do you do when your right to protest has been taken away? You can't, I can't go... It hasn't been taken away, you live in a democracy, you've got every right to go and protest, to wave your banners, make your argument, and win that argument if you can. If I go to Oxford University tomorrow with my placards, I'll be arrested. 
OK? I can go one day a week for four hours, no more than four hours. That's because with no of more campaign than... of harassment and no, intimidation no, no, no. to try to stop construction workers actually building a new lab. These are peaceful protesters that are being forced into a cordon by the police, no more than 25 and for four you hours. In a democracy. You can't use a megaphone, you, you can't a use a whistle. And the, the onus, the burden is on you to win the argument. Well, as I say, which is why the Animal Liberation Front exists, because our right to peaceful protest has been taken away. It's been rapidly well, eroded. You cannot. Is not true. Have you got any other argument? Well, I don't need You're one. On I can't go to hunting. On the BBC broadcasting to the world today. Your right to make your case is absolute. I can't go to hunting the life sciences with a placard tomorrow because I will be arrested. So my right to protest has been taken away. I can't go to Oxford University. I couldn't go to the New Church guinea pig farm. The this, RSPCA, this is what's happening. The RSPCA, which believes in, in the rights of animals and wants to see animals treated with respect, says that the only answer to some of the problems that you see is education. Henry Macaulay, their spokesman, you have to educate people to bring them with you. Lasting change won't come by just scaring well, people. Well, the RSPCA is involved in the production of meat. It, it operates this freedom food scheme about meat production. So the animal, RSPCA isn't that concerned about animal welfare issues. Now, I say again, there are certain ways you can protest in this country, and, you know, one of them isn't standing outside a laboratory with a placard anymore. People, 700 police officers recently rounded up 30 peaceful protesters and have locked three of them in prison in order to shut down the campaign against hunting and life sciences. None of them have broken the law. None of them even questioned about breaking the law. They were questioned about which protests they'd been on, which street stalls they'd done, which letters they'd written, who else they knew in the movement. And they've all been put on bail. They're not allowed to speak to each other. They're not allowed to go on any demonstrations. This is because they protested peacefully and very effectively against this vile company that poisons 500 so, animals so, a day. So, Keith Mann, what are you going to do? Because the police take you seriously, they regard you as a serious homegrown terrorist threat. I'm talking about the movement now. They've set up an extremism tactical coordination unit which is focused on your group. Your ability to launch attacks has been severely curtailed. I believe attacks are down by at least 50% over the last few years. What are you going to do? Well, I've written a book very recently, so that's my focus for the immediate future. Well, that's peaceful and that's democratic. Well, and we'll you say that's not going to work. So what else you Well, no, do? I'm not saying it's not going to oh, work. Oh, so it can but, work. But this has been raised... The, the only reason I've been able to write a book is because the Animal Liberation Front has raised this movement, has brought these issues to the fore. We, we wouldn't have got it from the RSPCA or from the BUAV. Nobody was talking about animal abuse before the, the Animal Liberation Front came on the scene. You know, In your response it, to me about what now, the one thing you didn't talk about was whether you're prepared to use direct action and violence again, are you? I've never used violence in my interpretation. There's violence, I think we do, well, we do I'm our species of disservice. Well, I'm talking about your incendiary devices, your well, attacks against, quote, inanimate objects. Are you going to resume those? No, of course not. But violence, violence against living beings is something we should be discussing. Attacks on inanimate objects is not really that important in my interpretation. There are bigger issues that we should be discussing. And why we keep focusing on paint stripper on executives' cars over the torment of living beings, it baffles me, it really does. I find it, I find it painful that people have more concern and more respect for inanimate objects than for living beings. I'm just confused. Are you renouncing violence or aren't you? I've never used... Oh, well, I'm a vegan. I'm a dietary vegan. I don't even eat dairy products because I don't like the violence that's inflicted on living beings. I've got no time for violence, which is why I do what I do. Keith Mann, thank you very much for being on Hard Thank Talk. you. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.